straight in not getting involved and sticking with the U.S.'s guarantee that they will take out the remaining missile sites? Well, some are quite angry about it. Some say, we have always defended ourselves. Why should we not continue that process and defend ourselves now? And why should we depend upon somebody else to come in here and do it for us? A lot of people, however, uh, have taken great pride in the restraint and say that we should wait, that we, not, we should not uh, complicate American battle plans in the Gulf. Uh, first, let me say to the two guys that we're watching on the screen, uh, are you uh, trying out for the movie Foreign Correspondent with those clothes that you're wearing? <laughs> no, no, Ed, it's a, it's a very chilly night here in Jerusalem, and it's cold. Uh, it's more like Jim Scandinavia. Right, right. Um, <laughs> let, let me say something about the, uh, the lack of retaliation. Yeah. There really has been retaliation here. The lack of a response is a response. If you, if you think that what Saddam Hussein wanted was for the Israelis to res respond militarily and therefore have a wider war, the Israelis have responded very effectively by not responding. Let, let, they, have foiled his, they have foiled his goals. Let me ask a question of both of you. Uh, Tom, you. We've let lost, me ask we've lost a question. sound now. Oh, you cannot hear us? Ah, too bad. Uh, this, We're not uh, hearing you. Oh, okay. We, uh, sure. We've obviously lost the satellite uh, uh, from uh, Israel. This has been happening, as you know, on and off. We're at the mercy of uh, uh, time that we have to share with uh, other networks and electricity going in and out and satellites that are uh, fairly undependable. Uh, being told we're trying to get the audio portion and the picture back from Israel and if we can bear with things for one moment uh, our last point. Well, let me tell you what I was going to ask them. If they come back, I'll ask it of right. them. It is this. Tom Friedman has a wonderful article and news analysis in uh, the New York Times uh, so today, uh, uh, Section 4. And what he says in quoting uh, Israeli is uh, that the fact that the Palestinian Arabs on the West Bank and some, I think, uh, in Israel itself, uh, are taking uh, such joy in the bombing of residential areas by Iraq with the use of the Scud and are hoping uh, that uh, Israeli Jews are killed uh, with poison gas ends for the foreseeable future any thought that uh, you would get Israeli uh, supportive of uh, any independent state uh, on any part of that uh, West Bank and certainly makes sense. It probably should be pointed out these are some of the same people who were handed gas masks uh, as part of the government program to insulate everyone from chemical And attacks. then when the uh, Israeli police and military uh, use tear gas uh, to uh, uh, prevent rock throwing instead of shooting the rock throwers and I've been the subject of uh, rock being thrown, it could have split my skull these Arabs put on the uh, gas masks uh, that have been given to them by the Israeli uh, so that the Israeli uh, uh, military are ineffective. Makes no sense. We just saw some of the pictures of uh, putting the, the masks on and it's probably a good time to mention it was some of the most chilling reporting. Uh, worst fears being confirmed. Uh, we were uh, in uh, Washington, our Channel 2 News crew there, uh, listening on the car radio, rushing back to the Capitol. I mentioned this on the air Friday night. Uh, Jim was uh, reporting live for CBS radio and television. It was the closest thing to Edward R. Murrow from London that you could hear in this generation. Sirens in the background, uh, a catch in Jim's voice that we could all understand. Uh, how many of us have been in that kind of situation in the past 40 years? Uh, and, and the damage, uh, amazingly, amazingly, no deaths. So I was uh, surprised uh, at uh, the uh, fervor of Charlie Rangel. You know, I, I saw him on an earlier broadcast in which he uh, seemed to be so solicitous of uh, the state of uh, Israel as though uh, what's happening there uh, is dangerous uh, to Israel. To have uh, a, a close uh, alliance with the United States, uh, which is getting uh, closer every day, and uh, to prevent uh, Saddam Hussein now from doing uh, what he undoubtedly uh, would do at a later time in a stronger position if we had not uh, gone in there. And I wanted to ask him, I only regret that I didn't have the time, uh, if he was so concerned about uh, Israel, and he has made that issue, <laughs> uh, why did he support uh, Congressman Gus Savage, who is not only anti-Israel, but anti-Semitic, and he went out of his way to campaign actively uh, for this anti-Semite? When you compare what the Republicans did with respect to David Duke, 
who is running for um, uh, uh, a, a major political uh, office. They denounced him and said he wasn't a Republican. And here you had Charlie Rangel supporting a well-known anti-Semite. Now, uh, he can't say he didn't know it because everybody knows that Gus Savage is anti-Semitic, anti-Israel, and Charlie Rangel supported him At this actively. point, uh, we want to uh, allay any fears people watching uh, might have when we lost the satellite picture from Jim Jensen and Joe Klein in Israel. It was what we call a power hit, the same kind of power surge that knocks out home computers here in this country. Power has been uh, uh, wavering, and, and often in the Middle East and Europe, it's a less dependable part of our lives than it is here uh, in New York. So uh, we assure you all as well, they're as frustrated as we are not to be able to continue our conversation, a lot of us having not seen Jim since his departure. Jim will continue to report from Israel as Channel 2 News coverage of the Gulf War continues. We'll take a break now at this point. Our Reporters Roundtable segment is just up next when our special live Sunday edition returns.